What's going on YouTube and Uncommon Sense fam? We're coming back at you today with another tag challenge. The subject of this challenge is Fragrance Journey. Shout out to Maria Collette in Canada. If you guys have not watched her channel, I suggest you guys check out. See what she has going on over there. If you like what you see, hit up with a comment, subscribe. I thought this was an excellent idea. Maria suggested that I take the challenge back to my folks in Fragcom. Then she ended up tagging me after I replied. I'm going to be tagging a few individuals because I want to learn a lot more about your fragrance journey. There's a series of questions. I'm going to leave the questions in the description. So copy those questions and then answer them accordingly. The goal here is to cover a lot more about you, your fragrance journey as a fragrance enthusiast, frag head, reviewer, content creator, YouTuber, whatever it is in creative land. I'm going to invite you guys a little bit more into the world of uncommon sense. Thanks Maria Collette for the challenge and guess what? We're about to get into this thing. Every single day, I'm gonna make something great. That's my way. First question is, what is the newest fragrance in your collection? The newest fragrance in my collection is going to be Azaro Wild Mint. I'm partial to the note of mint in the fragrance, so when I saw this one, I was very intrigued to pick it up and check it out. I've not done a review on this one yet, so that's to come, but I enjoy this one even though I have Krypton Mint in my collection. This one kind of smells... When you first spray it on, it has a little bit of that downy freshness uh, vibe that I really dig. It's a note in here called Calypson that tones up melon-like. So you got the spearmint on top. You got more of the melon in the background toward the dry down. But the mint kind of sticks around for big ups to Max 40. Had I not dropped by his channel, I wouldn't have even known that this one was out. The next question is, what's the oldest fragrance in your collection? The oldest fragrance in my collection is Boucheron Perome. Eau de Parfum. I believe Boucheron Parfum debuted in 1991. This one is so sharp, so citrus, and this one actually is indeed a heavy hitter. The grown and sexy, you guys should definitely check this out if you've not already. It's a staple. It's very fresh. It's uh, kind of barbershoppy, and I really dig this fragrance, and I feel like most collectors, especially those who love gentlemanly fragrances, should definitely own a bottle. The next question, what's the most expensive fragrance in your collection? The most expensive fragrance in my collection is gonna be Yves Saint Laurent La Home. Even though this one was a gift, it was upward of a hundred bucks. One, because this gift set comes with not only the 3.3 ounce, it also comes with a 1.3 ounce. The next question, what's the most affordable fragrance in your collection? The most affordable fragrance in my collection, Bora Bora by Liz Claiborne. $13 for a 3.3 ounce. I remember seeing this a few times in some of the discount fragrance stores and just kind of passing it up, never giving it a chance. So I gave it a chance and I actually really enjoyed this fragrance. And I feel like this is one of my more affordable fragrances that I could technically stand to spend a little more time with getting to know. So review coming soon. Next question. What's your favorite easy reach? DKNY Be Delicious Men. It's woody, spicy, Fresh Granny Smith Apple Bite. This one made my top 10 for men's spring 2020 list. And I also reviewed this a little bit earlier in my fragrance journey when I really started posting the YouTube heavy, roughly about two years ago. So I've only been doing this for about two years. I feel like now I'm starting to gain some traction. I really enjoy taking the time to talk about my fragrances and my collection and get feedback from you all as my community. So I really enjoy this time that we spend together. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Next question. What's your favorite bottle design in your collection? I actually had a very hard time narrowing this down to just one. I'm attracted to Uncommon Sense. I like that the most, but the packaging also gets my interest. First up is Moschino Toy 2. And again, fellas, I know what you're going to say. That's a woman's fragrance. It really doesn't matter. I enjoy this one. It's clean, fresh, airy, and light, and it's an Eau de Parfum. I sprayed this on my skin, and it lasted basically the whole day. In addition, that bottle is beautiful. It's adorable. This one smells like classy champagne, 
mixed with a little bit of kosher wine. If you guys have ever had the sparkling cider, white grape, it smells like all of that goodness. It's fruity, it's fresh, it's some floral in there. It's really amazing. And I really feel like for the summertime heat, this is going to smell amazing on my skin. I actually can't wait for the world to open back up and this stay at home order to be lifted so we can get out and wear our flyest and In the past clothes. two months, I probably bought about 15 fragrances and I really need to slow it down. The good thing about it is I'll get a chance to review them and share with you some of the uncommon scents that I've found. My other favorite bottle design is King of Love. I actually saw this on Amazon for about 25 bucks and so I was like, okay, let me give it a try. I love the bottle design and it has like some charms in there. They're like little hearts. But again, it looks like a heart when you hold it like this. But when you turn it up like this, it looks like a spade. So I dig the fragrance. It kind of reminds me of Yves Saint Laurent La Homme. King of Love touts natural ingredients in here that is a little headache inducing when I've worn it a few times. It only lasts for a short amount of time, but you do have to go through that to get to the enjoyable part of this fragrance, which makes it a little bit challenging. I've not been wearing it the most, but I definitely enjoy that bottle design and the fragrance. But once it dries down, this one lasts actually a great amount of time. I've not reviewed this one on my channel yet, but I will definitely be doing that very soon. My next question, what's your smallest bottle? My smallest bottle is Chopard. This one's Neroli and Guatemalan cardamom. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a baby bottle, which I actually plan on decanting into one of my twist ups so I can just take it with me and spray on. Guys, if you've never smelled this one, it smells really close to Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino and Banana Republic's Neroli Woods. It smells a bit more complex and richer than Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. They're similar in price. They're both really, really expensive. And I think Chopard is considered niche. Our next question, what's your biggest bottle? My biggest bottle is a 4.2 fluid ounce Zier Icon Ooh, Kind of decent sprayer. And I'm sure there's probably not any real Oud in it, but I get that Oud-esque scent. Originally in the opening, this one kind of smells like Pine Saw. Kind of like bathroom clean a little bit. Once it dries down, it sits a little closer to the skin. And it does have that medicinal type of vibe. But then the oud tends to come along a little later. It sits closer to the skin. It performs okay. Roughly probably about four and a half hours. In your fragrance journey, you're still building. This is a good one to have. I probably won't be getting through this one anytime soon. Our next question. What fragrance has the best memory association for you? Michael Kors Extreme Blue. I wore... Michael Kors Extreme Blue to a luau a few years ago. I had such a good time. I met a lot of great people. The music was dope. The setting was amazing. The food was great. The drinks were great. I really had a good time that night. Got a few compliments. I danced. I left it all on the floor. I just really enjoyed myself. Our next question. Which fragrance was worth the hype? One fragrance that's definitely worth the hype in my collection is Dior Sauvage or De Toilette. It just... One of the best atomizers. God, it just smells so it smells so freaking good. So Dior Sauvage or the toilet was definitely worth the hype, in my opinion. Our next question: which fragrance was not worth the hype? Mont Blanc Individuel was not worth the hype. I'm about halfway through it. Jeremy Fragrance and others have hyped this one up to the point of where I had to smell it. To be quite honest with you, I really feel like Yop does a better job of this on my skin. A lot of people hate Yop, Jupe, whatever you guys call it. A lot of people hate that fragrance. However, that is one of the fragrances that got me into the game smelling great with fragrances, colognes, perfumes, etc. I always will have some positive memory attachment to that fragrance. I remember getting that fragrance as a Christmas gift and it was in a wooden box with a like a glass sliding top. And I really feel like Yope on my skin performs better than this fragrance, even though this fragrance smells good. It just, in my opinion, was not worth all of the hype. Everything that I review and give opinion on is something that I personally experience. It could work for you, it could not. So take all of the reviews and the opinions with a grain of salt. Our next question, what's your favorite fragrance from your favorite fragrance house? My favorite fragrance from one of my favorite fragrance houses, and I have a few, is... Versace Eros. This thing is sweet. It's minty. It's the bomb. It lasts forever. 
it made my top 10 heavy hitters list. This fragrance is just lasts forever. It smells so amazing. A lot of people hate it on it. Um, just like a lot of people hate on Dior Sauvage. Eh, I couldn't care less. And this will probably always be a staple in my collection. I see more people bringing up Eros Flame lately. And I was excited to try that one until I got a small decant. And I really wasn't blown away. I feel like the DNA of this one is much better. Next question. What's your most used fragrance? The most used fragrance is... Clean Men. This is my third bottle, and I just blow through these. This smells amazing. It's fresh. It's clean. It smells like you freshly gotten out of the shower. That lemon in here is done extremely well. This one is such a fresh, clean staple for my collection, and I don't hear a lot of talk about the clean line. If you guys have not checked out my review on Clean Men, check it out here. Also, this one has made the top 10 list for spring, I believe, as well as my spring bling playlist. So check all of those out because we got some great content on those. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in to Uncommon Sense and going on my fragrance journey with me to learn more about my collection and more about myself. I want you guys to do me a favor. Drop some comments below to answer some of the questions from the fragrance journey challenge that Maria Collette sent over to us. I'm going to tag a few individuals, Barry over at Centralize. Trey Sense, Hillary at Bureau Nerdy Fragrances, my man, Mr. Cheap Sense. If you can, participate in the challenge. Let us know a little bit more about your fragrance journeys and how you came to be a frag head. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe if you're enjoying it. Let me know what you guys are thinking about the content that we're putting out. If you guys have not noticed, got a little treat over here. We'll talk more about that soon, but that's my custom sneaker line. For the sneaker heads, as well as for your heads and collectors, we have a treat for you. It's been your boy, Uncommon Sense, and I'm out. Love you guys. Till next time.